This is a lesson on electric potential for a constant electric field in the unit on electrostatics. In a prior lesson, I had talked about the concept of electric potential and talked about how it's a mathematical definition of the relationship between the electric field and the ability of that field to do work on a charge if that there were a charge in the field. Uh, and in the situation where there's a constant electric field, and you don't need to know calculus in order to understand where I'm going with this, um, a constant electric field doesn't have any change um, for an integral, and so uh, you get a constant value outside of the integral. And inside of the integral, uh, you just have um, what's the length of something, and s you usually choose just like a line, a regular line. We just move in a straight line in the electric field. And so a straight line in the electric field is measured by a distance d. And so that's how we get this equation. We have this constant electric field multiplied by a distance d, and that would be the voltage change in a constant electric field. So if I have a point A and I have a point B, I would be able to find the potential difference between those two points by multiplying the electric field by the distance between those two points. Notice again, this is a constant electric field. And I have this note down here. I see students do this all the time, so that's why I'm warning you to make note. Electric fields by point charges aren't constant, so you cannot use this equation for point charges. There's a whole nother lesson that goes over that concept. This is when the electric field is constant. That's a constant electric field. I'm also going to remind you that potential is a scalar quantity with no direction. Okay, it's just a value. So please don't try to represent it with a value or um, add it like vectors or anything. It's just a simple scalar quantity. The problem I picked out is a biological application with a cell wall. If you're familiar with biochemistry and some organic chem, you know that there is a potential difference between the inside and the outside of a cell wall, and that's why there's pumps. There's potassium pumps, and there's chlorine pumps, and um, uh, you need to be able to get those ions through the cell wall, and you need a pump to do it because often you will move this ion in a direction that it does not want to go. This positive potassium ion does not want to go towards more positive charges. It does not want to do that. So you need a, a pump to move it over that direction. So this is an interesting biological application. And what it's asking for here, the membrane walls of living cells has a surprisingly large electric field across them due to the separation of ions. And you can see that there's ions in here and there's ions in here. The voltage difference from the outside to the inside of the cells is negative 70 to 80 millivolts. And it depends on the type of cell and where what type of body it's in. Uh, but that's the typical one, 70 to 80 mil millivolts, and that's a negative value. Uh, so if you work maybe with nerve uh, conduction, the resting potential for a nerve cell, cell it's somewhere in here. Uh, it says, which direction does the electric field in the membrane point? And we don't need to know any values in order to figure out that direction. We know that electric fields always point from positive to negative charges. So when I look at here, I can just draw the electric field from positive to negative charges. It will go, and this field will be perpendicular to these two conducting surfaces. So it will be perpendicular here and point radially inward. Okay, so when it says which direction does it point, we're going to say um, from the outside to the inside. And that would be the direction of the E field. We also know that the electric field points from high to low potential. So the outside is going to be the high potential and the inside is going to be the low potential and that makes sense because we're, we're losing this potential. The, out, the inside is lower than the outside. It says assuming the, a constant electric field, which I mean this is an approximation over the small, it, it's an 8 nanometer thick membrane, it's approximately constant through there. It says what is the magnitude of that electric field? So I'm going to use the equation and do a step of algebra on here. I can solve for the electric field is the change in the electric potential from one point to another over the distance between those two points. 
Uh, we always have VB minus VA. Um, but in this situation, they're asking for magnitude. So I'm really just going to put an absolute value around here and not worry about the negative sign. I already know the direction. And they want the magnitude. And a magnitude is just a value. It'll be given as a, a, a number without a sign at all. So um, I'm going to put 75 millivolts. That's the middle there. It didn't give me an exact number. So I'll put 75 millivolts. Um, and that will be 10 to the negative third volts, right? Milli is 10 to the negative third. I'm going to divide it by the thickness of that membrane. So 8 nanometers, which is 8 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. And notice here the units, we're going to get volts per meter. We know that's an alternate unit for electric field. Typically, it's newtons per coulomb. But in this situation, volts per meter is perfectly fine. And when you run this through your calculator, what we expect, it says that uh, we a surprisingly large electric field. This electric field is 9.375 times 10 to the 6th newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. I'm going to put volt per, volts per meter here. Uh, 9 million volts per meter. That's a pretty large electric field.